Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to use an Excel formula to return the next date after today that a value occurs. So we want to use a lookup formula on a value uh, just like a normal VLOOKUP or index match but it's got to be the first instance of that value after today's date. And that's really the key bit that makes it more complicated. So I've got these list of dates. Important thing to mention at the point of doing this video, today's date is the 13th of July. So when you look at this, that what I've got highlighted on screen at the moment is today's date. And you can see over on the right hand side, I've got some pretend classes. I want to return the next date of the next Power BI class which as you can see, should be the 14th of July. There's one before it, but the first one after today's date is that one. There's also one later, but that's what I'm after, 14th of July. Now to do this, we're going to use the index and match formula, uh, but we're gonna to have to put it into an array formula to get this working for us. So we're gonna write it on screen, and then I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So. Let's get going with this. Let me zoom in on cell E3 here, so you can see my formula a little bit clearer. And we'll type equals index, open bracket. Now hopefully some of you watching this are familiar uh, with index and match. Uh, I'll include a link to um, a page on my website about it if you're not familiar with it to get a bit of background. But that's gonna prompt for the array. Now I'm returning a date, so I'm just gonna to scroll to the left and highlight the array of dates, uh, which in this example is A2 down to A13. Uh, let's just go back to where I was. Oh, why didn't that come out? Let's do that again. Here we go. And if I put in the comma, it prompts for the row number that we want. Now this is the match functions job. So we'll open up a match function and it'll prompt for the lookup value. And we're going to look for the value of one. Now this is where it might start sounding a little bit weird and I'll do a little bit more explanation uh, after the formula as to why we are doing this. Just persevering for Matt now, if I put in my comma, it prompts for the lookup array. Now this is where we're going to put in um, our multiple conditions. It's got to be the Power BI class, and it's got to be a date after today's date. So let's pick on the date first, as it comes in the first column of this list. So I'm going to open up a set of brackets, and I'm going to write that criteria in. So I'm going to highlight the dates, A2 down to A13, and ask if they're greater than or equal to today's date. And I'm going to use the Magnificent Today function as our dynamic way of tracking that. So it, continue, it would continue to work tomorrow and next week and next month. I'll close off that bracket. So we have a little array in there. Uh, is A2 to A13 greater than or equals today? In goes the multiply sign, our asterisk. Open up another set of brackets. Here comes the other condition. I like to think of that kind of multiply sign as the and logic when I'm doing things like this. Okay, so the second condition, it must be a Power BI class. B2 to B13. It could be easier just to type that in, potentially. All the scrolling I'm doing. Uh, but I wanna know if that is equal to the value of cell D3, aka Power BI. I will then close off that array. That brings me back to match. This little box underneath telling me that. I'm in the lookup array still. That is the lookup array. Is that true and that true? Comma, what type of match? Uh, zero, I want an exact match. I'm then just going to close off that bracket for the match function and then close off the bracket for the index function. And I'm going to do control, shift and enter. This is an array formula, so you cannot just press enter. It must be control, shift, and enter. 
And there I have the 14th of July, which is the first class of, sorry, the first instance after today's date of a Power BI class. And if I was to change the class to Excel Advanced, the answer comes back as the 17th of July, because that is the first Excel Advanced class after today's date. So you can see this formula is working. Let me go and put my Power BI back in as my example. Uh, zoom back in a little bit on this formula and try and provide a bit, a little bit more explanation for going to cell E3 here. Now we can use the F9 function key on our keyboard to perform a manual calculation. And it's a shortcut that I like to use when I'm troubleshooting formulas and trying to understand other people's formulas quickly. So here, if I highlight that first condition and do the F9 key on that, let's try that again, then that will calculate just that instance of this formula. So I get all these trues and falses, which doesn't look too pretty, but they're showing which cells met a condition. So the first one, no, second one, no, next one, no, blah, 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 until we start seeing all these troops, because they're the ones after today's date. If I highlight the next bit and press F9 on there, that will evaluate that. So you can see there's actually, uh, you know, in the Power BI case, you can see the, the Power BI class is appearing. Uh, so there are three of them. There's one there, one there, and one there. There are three Power BI classes. And if I actually just highlight those two arrays and F9 them, then this is what finally gets returned. So you get all these trues and falses. They get multiplied against each other. Remember, trues and falses are really ones and zeros. So it's like zero multiply one, you know, zero multiply by zero. And eventually when ones multiply against each other, we get ones back. So there are two Power BI classes after today's date represented by these ones. And that is why we're looking for a one, let's say look at a value, in that range exact match. And that's how it works. Match will return the first instance, which is that, and then index returns from there. And that is how this formula works. Can look a little bit odd with looking for number one and putting in those arrays, especially if you're not familiar with this kind of work, uh, but you can get used to it. You know, it comes with practice and this doesn't seem uh, quite so scary and quite so crazy. But there is our Excel formula to return uh, the first instance of a value after today's date. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.